All right, in this video, we'll do the 2020 10B problem number six. Driving along a highway, Megan noticed that her odometer, which is like how many miles she's traveled, showed 15951 miles. This number is a palindrome. It reads the same forward and backward. In other words, if I go this way or if I go this way, 15951 is the same number read the other direction. Um, speaking of which, pause for a moment. Uh, you may have heard that this last Sunday was a palindrome. Um, 2000 and uh, it was 02, um, 02, 2020, right? And then some people said that it hadn't happened for 900 years. Well, actually, it happened pretty recently. It happened in 10, 02, 2001. And they also said it's not going to happen again for some number of years. It actually, again, is going to happen pretty quick in 1202-2021. So uh, just thought you might find that interesting in case you had heard that. It's not really true. Okay, so back to this. Uh, then two hours later, the odometer displayed the next higher palindrome. What was her average speed? Okay, before we do that, let's find the next higher palindrome. Higher palindrome. Okay, if you try to stick with 159, there's no way to get anything over here that matches these two without duplicating it. So it must not be 159. So the 9 is going to have to go up by 1, which means the, it's going to become 16. And so if it's going to become 16, you might as well try for the lowest one, which is a 0, and go 6, 1. There it is, the next higher palindrome. How far had she traveled? 110. If I add 110, I will get this. What was her average speed in miles per hour during this two-hour period? Simply divide by two to get B, 55. Continuing on with the 2020 10B problem number seven. How many positive, even, multiples of three less than 2020 are perfect squares? So we need a lot of things. So there's a lot of qualifying words. Everything that's you know, positive is pretty easy to accomplish. We don't have to worry about that. They're going to be perfect squares, which means they're going to be positive anyway. Um, even. In order to have an even perfect square, it's going to have to have a 2 in it and then squared later. In order to be a multiple of 3, it's going to have to have a 3 in it and then squared. So they're all going to have to have at least this, 6 squared. Then we can do 6 times 1 squared. That will be a positive even multiple of 3, 36, right? Um, less than 20, 20, we're good. We can have 6 times 2 squared. That's 12 squared is 144. We don't actually have to find all of these. We can be confident because of the 6 that it's going to be a multiple of 3 and the, and the 2, which is a factor of 6, it will definitely be even. Then we can do 6 times 3 squared. We can do 6 times 4 squared. We can do 6 times 5 squared, 6 times 6 squared, 6 times 7 squared. Keep in mind, this is 42 squared. We are starting to get kind of high. Let's check the next one, 6 times 8 squared. Now, let's take stock of where we're at. Um, I don't have time to unpack this right now, but the difference between consecutive squares is the sum of the bases. So, 50 squared is 2,500. Therefore, 49 squared will be 99 less at 2401, and 48 squared is going to be 97 less than that, which should be 2304. That's too big. It's bigger than 2020. 48 squared is out. We've got one. It's counted for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The answer is A. Okay, and now on to the 2020 10B problem number eight. I'm going to cover two solution methods for this, one to confirm the other, and then kind of a slick solution for the second one that could make it go a little faster for you. Points P and Q lie in a plane with PQ equal to 8. Let's create that. It doesn't matter how long you make it, just call it 8. How many locations for point R, so we need a point R, in this plane are there such that the triangle with those vertices, P, Q, and R, is a right triangle with area 12 square units. Well, let's find the base and height of such a triangle. Half times, tw uh, times 8 times the height has to equal 12. 
This goes into here four times, divide by four to get the height will have to be three. Now there's two possibilities. This can be a leg or it can be the hypotenuse. So first, if we made it the leg, there'd be a point here where this is three, right? This would have area of 12. There'd also be one over here, one over here, and one over here. That gives us four of that type. Now, what about if this is the hypotenuse? Well, we can think of it this way. Uh, if I was to make a right triangle in here with a height of three, then this would have to be x. This is a right angle now, because this is the hypotenuse, and this would be eight minus x. This is the longer way, but what we can do is when you drop the altitude from the right angle of a, of a right triangle, you create similar triangles. All three triangles created are similar. The original with both of these. Without explaining too much how it works, or maybe I just will real quick, um, I call it the car driving technique. And it's just something that a local teacher taught. Um, if you think of these as city streets, and we call this A, B, M, C, and D, then we can do, if we start a car driving right here, and we're driving this way, right, on this street called A, and I write down A as I drive over it. I do a turn up over M, and I put M here, and I do a U-turn and come back down. I will create M again, because I did the U-turn back over M, and then I keep going to B, right? Think of it like a car on a map, right? So A over M equals M over B. This is the one we're gonna use here in a second. There's still two others from this that you can get, and that is if you start the car here in the middle and you go left or right. You have to remember with the car driving technique, uh, this is, happens as a result of similar triangles. I don't want to unpack that. That takes a long time. Um, but you can go left. You will go A over C. It's the only place you can go from this corner. If you went this way, you can only go this way. And then the, the rule is you always do a U-turn after the second street. So do a U-turn here back over C. And if you come back here, if you just go over A, there are reciprocals, which doesn't make any sense. So don't. Go all the way across, and you get A plus B. The third one is if you go right, B over D equals D over A plus B. I can make a separate video for this if it's confusing. Let's get back to this one. X over 3 is equal to 3, come back down, that's the U-turn, over 8 minus X. Cross multiply to get 8x minus x squared equals 9. Move everything to the right so I get a positive x squared term. x squared minus 8x plus 9. We want to know how many solutions this has. So if I do b squared, I get 64 minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 9. This is greater than 0. As a result, x has two solutions. It could be here or it could be over here. There's another one over here that whatever the, the placement exactly, it will look like this. And so uh, there'll be one here, one here, one down below, and one over here. That's four more for a total of eight. Now, if you want to see the slick solution, the slick, the slick solution is that you just think of this as a uh, diameter of a circle, right? In a circle, if you have a diameter and you make a triangle in the semicircle that's inscribed, it will always be a right angle. So the maximum height will occur when this right here is a height of four, 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 and four, meaning that the center of the circle is right here, um, as we know, in the, in the, of the diameter. Now, the thing is, if this height is four, there must be a height to its left. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. All triangles that are inscribed in the semicircle are right triangles, all of them. Okay, so then if they're all right triangles, there is a height over here less than four equal to three. There's another one over here less than four equal to three, and similarly on the other side of the circle. So you could have just done that without having to do all of the car driving technique or the ratios. The answer is D. Okay, and now for the 2020 10B problem number 9, which was also the 12B problem 8. How many ordered pairs of integers x, y satisfy the equation x to the 2020 plus y squared equals 2y? Kind of a big exponent. You know, how do we begin this kind of thing? We'll just start manipulating it in some way. Could I move stuff to one side or the other? Yeah. 
Now, what I want to move these things over here or one of these things over here, I don't really want a negative y squared. I don't know why I would want a negative x to the 2020, but maybe I can move the 2y over here and take advantage of the 0. Okay, then I can already see what's going to happen now. Because this looks like something, if you've done Algebra 1, you should recognize as the potential of it. And the potential of it is you can complete the square. So you complete the square, x to the 2020 plus, you're going to cut the negative 2 in half. That's y minus 1 squared. You're going to square the negative 1 and add it to both sides. You can't just add it to one side because you have an equal sign. All right, then this is equal to 1. From here, it's simply a matter of thinking. I've got, this is obviously a perfect square, whatever this is, but so is this. So really, this is a square plus a square equals 1, and since x and y need to be integers, we know that uh, these expressions are integers as well. So is y minus 1. That means my possibilities for x to the 2020 are 0, and y minus 1 is 1 or x to the 2020 is 1 and y minus 1 is 0. Now be careful, we're not saying x is 0, y is 1. Well, in this case, x is 0. But we're not saying that y is 1 exactly. We're saying the expression y minus 1 squared has to come out to be 1. Okay, so uh, with the 0, 1 version, you're going to get x is 0. But there's more than one way for y to be 1. y could be 0, uh, or y minus 1 squared to be 1 y could be 0. That gives you negative 1 squared, which is 1. But it also gives you 2. If y is 2, we'll give you 2 minus 1 squared is also 1. So both of these work. Now, if x to the 2020 is 1, be careful, there's also the negative 1. So you could use 1 and y 0, or negative 1 and y 0. You get four. You're sure they all work. You can plug them back in if you're not sure, but they do all work. It's definitely not going to be infinitely many. All right, and now for the 2020 10B problem number 10. It was also the 12B problem 9. A three-quarter sector of a circle of radius four inches together with its interior can be rolled up to form the lateral surface area of a right circular cone. Let's draw something that looks like that so we can think about it. Okay, by taping together along the two radii shown, this one and this one, are the only radii shown, what is the volume of the cone in cubic inches? Let's start accessing things we need to know. The volume of a cone is one-third area of the base times the height, the same as a pyramid. So we can make it one-third pi r squared h. Okay, so we're going to need the R and the H. How are we going to get those? All right, if you just picture what will happen if you were to stick these together. There have been several problems like this in the past in competition math. Maybe you've encountered one at some point. If you bring these together, this part that's stuck together is going to be the slant height of the cone. Okay, what about the, the cone here, though? How is this part made? It's this connected to this, which means this three-quarter arc length is the entire circumference of our cone. Okay, so how do I get this? Well, 2 pi r uh, is the circumference, and since r is 4, we get a circumference of 8 pi if I had the whole thing. If we don't have the whole thing. We need to multiply that by 3 fourths because we only have 3 fourths of the whole thing. This equals 6 pi. That is the circumference of our cone. So we have 2 pi r equals 6 pi, r will equal 3. Now that we know this is 3, don't assume this is 5. Okay, you're going to have to do Pythagorean. So it's going to be the height squared plus 9 equals 16. Subtract and square root to get root 7. Great, we've got all the things we need. We plug in and we're done. 9 over 3 is 3 pi, h is root 7, it's 3 pi root 7, and that is answer choice C.